How are you? I feel some pressure around my stomach, but overall I'm fine. It feels like the delivery is right around the corner. I'm glad you're fine. Ever since I got pregnant with the second child, my health has been all over the place. I know, right? I didn't have so much trouble with my health when I was pregnant with Anne. I guess it varies depending on the child. Is Anne fine? Is she feeling lonely? She often asks about you, Betty, wondering if you've already gone to bed when it gets night. But it seems like her joy of becoming a big sister outweighs that. While looking at the ultrasound photo of the baby, she keeps saying, I wish it would be born soon. I see. If she's looking forward to it that much, I guess it's reassuring. They often say that when a new baby is born, the older child tends to regress. I was a little worried about that. It should be fine. Anne is already a grade schooler after all. Right. Oh, by the way, what happened with the business trip? Did it get confirmed? Yes. I'm really sorry. The department head wants me as the project leader to go on this business trip. It can't be helped. You've been working really hard, hoping that if this project goes well, you might be able to get a promotion. And I've been working hard for that, Hans. I'm being counted on by the people at the company. I have to meet their expectations. So, as we discussed before, it wouldn't be right to leave Anne alone at home. So we can leave her at your parents' place while we go back to our hometown. Yes. I asked your parents too, and they seem more than happy. They seem happy to live with their grandchild for a month. They even said they'd take care of dropping her off at and picking her up from school. Is that okay? It's fine. They've just retired and have some free time. I'm sorry. This time because of my circumstances, it's ended up being a childbirth in our hometown. If I could have helped a bit more with the house, it would have ended with your mother coming over like last time. Your parents' house isn't that far from ours. It's okay. It's easier for me at my parents' house. And there's also the matter of my house this time. I see. We'll be apart for a while, but let's try to get through this. I love you. Today the baby was moving around a lot, so energetic, it seems like it will be born soon. Really? I'm excited! Did you hear from Dad about the overnight stay? Yes! Dad is busy with work, right? That's right. We'll have to say goodbye to Dad for a while. Are you okay with that? Yes! I promise to play a lot with Dad when I get home. I'm fine. I see. Well then, Grandpa will come to pick you up tomorrow. Okay. Good morning. I'll be home around 3 p.m. Anne is so excited to see her dad after such a long time. Make sure you play with her a lot when we get back. I can't unlock the door. Can you open it? Aren't you home right now? I've changed the locks, so don't come back. Huh? What are you saying? Is this some sort of surprise? Don't come back. Wait, what's happening? Did something happen? Just let us in. It's starting to rain and the kids will get soaked. No way. This is not your house anymore. Just go away, okay? I don't understand. What on earth is happening? We're temporarily sheltering at a neighbor's house because of the rain. Can you explain what's going on? Explain? Think about it deep in your heart. What are you trying to say? You're not in your right mind if you're kicking out your own children. My children? Don't lie. Tell the truth. They're not really my kids, are they? What? I had a hunch from the first child. Anne doesn't look like me. The second one, who was just born, looks even less like me. That's when I knew. Wait, are you suggesting I cheated on you? What makes you say that? Getting heated like this just makes you look guilty. You used to adore Anne. Because I thought she was my child. I can't believe this. I'll contact my parents. I'll report to your parents too. What the hell are you trying to do? You're going to twist the story to suit you, aren't you? 
I'll do the explaining. You just babysit the brat. Brat? Anyway, don't come back today. Understood? Are we not allowed to come home? Daddy, what about our promise to play? Didn't we promise to play together when I get home? Did you and mom have a fight? You need to make up. My teacher at school said so. When you fight, you have to say sorry. Listen, Anne. All of this is mom's fault. Mom lied to dad. Lied? Dad isn't your real dad, Anne. So don't call me dad anymore. Brat. Hey, how can you say that to a child? Anne is shocked and crying. What happened to you over this past month? Nothing happened. I'm sane. Rather, I feel like I've returned to my true self. What's that supposed to mean? Was all that kindness a lie? Do you remember the vows we made at our wedding? To trust each other at all times. You said it too. Ugh, shut up, shut up. Be quiet. Don't contact me anymore. Wait. I can't possibly accept this. Hands. What do you mean they're not my kids? I see. I get it all now. The real reason why you've changed your mind. Huh? There's no real reason. The cause is you. You said you're taking shelter from the rain at a neighbor's house, right? At Davis's house, a mom friend. The house diagonally across from ours. So what? When we were visiting our hometown, Davis said she accidentally saw it when she was driving. You bringing a woman into her house. Just because you're cornered, don't start spouting nonsense. Or is it this? All the women are teaming up to push the responsibility on me. This is why I hate housewives. They have nothing better to do than spread ridiculous rumors. There's evidence. What? Davis's car dash cam. I checked just in case, and it was all clearly recorded. I was shocked when I saw the woman's face. Your ex-girlfriend, right? It was Angela, wasn't it? That was a colleague from work. It's not Angela. It's a case of mistaken identity. Angela and I went to the same high school and college. I saw her face often, and her distinctive mole hasn't changed since then. I wouldn't mistake her. Should we track down our friends from college and contact Angela? We can also send her the dashcam data and ask if it's her. Or we could hire a private detective. Enough already. I got it. Angela did come to her house. Are you happy now? That's not good enough. You were saying something about the kids. A little investigation will show that those two are indeed your children. Why would you say something so stupid? Explain it properly from your mouth. Ugh, shut up. What's with that tone? You sound like my mom. It's true that when women give birth, they transform into this creature called a mother. They lose all their appeal as the opposite sex. Even though Angela was so wonderful, it's a huge difference. You plotted against me to get together with Angela, tried to divorce me under favorable conditions for you. If so, you're the worst. You said such terrible things to little Anne. You're an irredeemable scumbag. Shut up. You, after all, don't know anything about me. Don't make assumptions. Then speak up. Stop blabbering nonsense. Come on, come on. I've been holding back all this time. Huh? Holding back? I never even liked kids. But playing the role of a good father was well received at work. In this day and age, you never know where information will leak from. So I had to keep up appearances at work, in front of my wife's family, and in front of our family. It was all for promotion. Living like that was suffocating. But the moment you all went back to your hometown, I felt that our cramped house suddenly became spacious. I could go out for a drink late at night, meet with friends. I hadn't had that kind of freedom since I was single. Is that why you ran into Angela again? Yeah, Angela hadn't changed at all. It was like my heart time-traveled back to my bachelor days. Every day was rosy. 
I was so happy. But when you guys came back, this fun time would disappear, and I'd be back to that suffocating life. That's why I kicked you guys out to prevent it. I see. So you're basically drunk on a momentary freedom, and your head is filled with fantasies. Looking at you now, you're clearly not sane. If you're convinced, that's just fine. Go ahead and leave me. That way, I'm freed from the burden and can truly be free. Do what you want. I don't want to live with a man like you anyway. However, make sure you pay the child support, and I'll definitely be claiming alimony. Give as much as you like. It doesn't hurt or bother me at all. So it's an agreement between both parties. It's an amicable divorce. No more lingering issues. Let's not dig up the past ever again. Let's stop the unnecessary fights. You just don't want to go to court, right? It would only put you at a disadvantage. You're so low. Well, never mind. Betty, how are you doing? Who is this? It's me. It's Hans. You forgot about me. That's harsh. Ah, it's been a while. I was about to forget you. Rather, I prefer not to retain even a millimeter of memory concerning you. I was thinking it was about time you contacted. Were you waiting for my call? That's nice. Don't just interpret things in a way that suits you. I just thought it was about time you woke up. And came crying back in a disgraceful manner. Did you enjoy your fleeting freedom? Is Angela doing well? Are you asking even though you know? Of course, I heard that Angela dumped you. Why? Why don't you tell me the reason? Well, Angela got angry because you sued me for alimony, and then we had a fight. I see, but that's natural, right? I told you clearly. I'll claim the alimony strictly. You agreed, didn't you? I didn't think that Angela would be charged too at that time. I didn't think that far. It's natural to claim alimony from a cheating husband and his lover, right? Ah, but you were like a drunk at that time, and your head was full of fantasies, so you couldn't think that far. You're right. I was out of my mind. Please, I want you to take me back. I return to my old self. No, the family bonds you broke will return just because of that, and we are divorced. We're strangers now. Please. I can't take it any more. I can't stand going home. Even when I come home tired from work, the house is dirty, dark, and no meal is served. There's no family to welcome me home. I'm about to lose it from loneliness. Ah, I see. Really? Right now, I'm mentally quite unstable, and because of that, I'm not doing well at work. I can't keep my relationships as smooth as before. Ah,、uh, that's probably because your mental state, or rather, the people at your company dislike you. The story that you're the scumbag who locked his wife and child out of the house has gotten around to your coworkers. Why? Don't tell me you deliberately ratted me out to the company. Don't mess with me. I told you it was an amicable divorce. I didn't do anything. Remember Davis, who let us take shelter during that incident? He seems to have spread the rumor. What? It seems like Davis knows someone who works at the same company as you. The rumor spread from that person throughout the company. There's a saying: no one can put a door on people's mouths. Your carefully built image is now shattered. I doubt you'd be fired, but it might impact your future. Oh, speaking of which, weren't there talks about a promotion? You're kidding, Betty. If things go on like this, my life will really be over. But if you guys are with me, I'm sure I can start over. I want to see the kids. I want to talk to Anne again. No. I've been saying all this. Why won't you listen to my request? Are you saying it's okay no matter what happens to me? You're heartless. Stop throwing a tantrum. Right now, you're just like a baby. Hey, mom. Did you talk to dad? Yes. 
Did Dad say anything? He said he wants to see you guys. You know... Do you still want to see Dad? I used to. Is it different now? I realized when I saw you and the grandparents talking, Dad did something bad, right? Yes, he did. He did something very terrible. You were very sad. And Mom was very sad too. Yes, I know. I saw Mom crying in the middle of the night. My school teacher said, If you fight, you have to apologize and make up. But if you do something very bad, even if you say sorry, you won't be forgiven. Dad did something like that, right? So I won't see Dad until he really regrets it. Is that okay? Yes. I want Dad to really reflect on it. I see. You're an adult, aren't you? Probably the most adult in the family. When Han's father learned of what we had suffered at the hands of Hans, he was understandably furious. Hans was disowned by his father, ensuring that he would receive no further assistance, regardless of what might happen in the future. Whether influenced by the rumors circulating at work, soon Hans was demoted and relocated to a remote rural area. His chances of promotion were cut off, and it seems his salary was reduced as well. But given that he needs to pay child support, quitting his job isn't really an option. Until Anne can find it in her heart to forgive him, Han's days of atonement will continue. As for me, I'm helping out at the company my father runs while studying for a caregiver qualification. This is an effort to secure a higher paying job. My youngest is still small, which can be difficult, but Anne has been a huge help, taking care of my little sister like a second mother. From now on, we three women plan to support each other and carry on. There's a sale at the supermarket nearby tomorrow. I'll buy lots of chicken, so should we have fried chicken for dinner tomorrow? You like it, right? Um, I can't because I'll be back late tomorrow. Really? Busy at work? Yep. How about the day after? I can't get back early that day either because I'm busy. Okay, then I'll keep it in the freezer. We can have fried chicken anytime if we keep it there. We don't need to have it at home. I like the way restaurants make it better. Yeah, maybe, but... We used to have fried chicken at home often. Honestly, I don't really enjoy eating anything at home. Oh, is my cooking that bad? I mean, eating with you in itself is just stressful. It's not fun to talk to you, and your reaction to everything is boring. Am I that boring? When we got married, I thought your seriousness was good. But it's boring now. You lack a sense of humor. I do? Women are usually good listeners and talkers. My female co-workers are all fun and charming. Unlike you, it's fun to talk to them. I see. That's why you come back late these days. Yeah, I guess that's part of it. Sorry for making you feel uncomfortable at home. I'll try to improve our relationship, so... Improve it how, exactly? I'll do my best not to bore you. I'll think of plans so both of us can have fun together. Hmm, what kind? Going on an all-day date like we used to. Meh. Oh, you don't want to? I don't want to waste a whole day on that. Then, just from the afternoon till evening. Where are we going? Is there somewhere you want to go, Brett? Not really. It's a lot of effort to think of somewhere to go on a date. Then I'll come up with the idea. How about going to your favorite restaurant? We can go to a hotel later, as long as you treat me to dinner. Just kidding. What is that? Oh, that's so creepy. Sorry, I meant it as a joke. You told me I need a sense of humor. It's not funny at all. You're really no good at this. Don't text me anymore. It's irritating. Sorry. On second thought, I don't want to go out on a date. I can see that it's going to be uncomfortable and we'll just fight. Right. We don't need to spend time together just because we're a married couple. 
Oh, and don't make plans for the weekend without asking me, okay? It's just annoying. Okay. It's fine, anyway. I've got a sudden business trip for this weekend now. Oh, really? I need to go help prepare for a new shop to open next week because they're behind. I leave here on Saturday morning and come back Sunday night. Great. <laughs> I'll have a good time on my own, so can focus on work. Yep. Thanks. I'll see you Sunday evening. Hi. It's been a while, Kevin. I'm Sam, Brett's wife. Do you still remember me? Long time no see. Of course I remember you. I met you when my wife and Brett were working at the same department, right? Yes. It was roughly two years ago. Around that time, all the workers got along pretty well. It was great for him to work with her. After Cheryl moved to another department, we lost touch with you, though. They used to have lots of work socials back then. I remember going to barbecue and bowling. Yes. After she moved apartments, we sure did lose touch with each other. But only you and I. Huh? What do you mean? Brett is still very friendly with Cheryl. What with them being co-workers still. Oh, I guess that's good. But I'm a little puzzled by how you phrased that. Yes. Sorry. I did that on purpose. So, do you have something you want to tell me? I'd like to ask you a favor. I'll be straightforward with you. Okay. My husband and your wife are currently having an affair. What? Why don't we go interrupt them together? I want to catch them in the act. Your husband and my wife are having an affair? Is that true? I heard she went to a trip with her friend today, though. I've hired a private investigator since February. So, I already have plenty of evidence, such as photos of them going into a hotel together. I can't believe it. It may be hard to believe, but it's true. If you'd like, I'll send you some pictures. If you're that confident, it must be true. Excuse me, I feel nauseous. Sorry that I told you this so suddenly. I should have told you in advance. But I didn't want to say anything until I had hard evidence. Otherwise, I was afraid you'd think I was just harassing you. Well, I guess you're right. I would have asked Cheryl. But this wasn't completely unexpected to me. I felt suspicious about her behavior. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I guess. But is it necessary to catch them in person if you already have a lot of evidence? We should be able to sue them for emotional damages already. Honestly, it's just for us to de-stress. As you say, I don't need to do this for a stronger court case. But I just want to really put pressure on Brett. I'm sorry to ask you such a private question, but... Do you hold a grudge against him for something other than the affair? I am embarrassed to tell you this, but... He's been telling me that I'm boring and my personality is too serious. I don't get along with him these days, and I was trying to improve things. You got into a rut. It's natural for married couples. I was trying to do different things because it's better if we get along well. I asked him to go on a date, but he rejected me and said I was being creepy. I was so disappointed in him in that moment. It broke my heart. Are you serious? That must have been hard on you. You tried your best to improve the relationship, though. But I think I understand how you feel a little bit. You do? Actually, I was told by Cheryl that I'm too serious as well. She says the way I speak is too stiff. I see. But you seem more intelligent than stiff to me. Thank you. But my wife doesn't like it. She insults me every day, telling me I was boring. You went through the same as me. Brett also sees me as beneath him and boring. That's why I want to corner him methodically. I thought this would be flashier and funnier too. I get it now. I think I'm a bad person to even ask such a thing of you. I'm not only serious, but insidious as well. I'm amazed at myself. Isn't it crazy to go to all this trouble to catch them? No, I think I understand. Sorry. I shouldn't ask you this for the sake of my own revenge. I know what I said, but you don't have to do this. No, I'll go with you. Either way, 
I have to confront Cheryl. Let me help with your plan. Brat, isn't it cruel to kick me out from the house so suddenly? Take the chain lock off the door. Let me in. As if. What were you doing barging in with a camera? Why are you here, Sam? It's my house too. I can come back at any time, right? Just delete that footage. Right now. No. It's definite evidence that you're having an affair. I need to let your parents watch it too. Stop it. Just stay away from home for now. And don't come back until I give you permission. Why do I have to stay away from home? Maybe you're going to let your affair partner leave while I'm away? No, that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? Either way, you guys are finished. Kevin is also an eyewitness. The guy next to you is Kevin? Yes, your affair partner's husband. Huh? You don't remember him? You must have met him several times. I didn't exactly have the time to examine his face closely just now. Now that both of your partners are here as well, let's talk it over. You said you had a business trip, but you lied. How dare you? You sociopath. You're the sociopath. Nice to meet you. Thank you for taking care of my wife. Huh? Oh no, are you her husband? Yes, it's Kevin. It seems like my wife is in very good hands. No, this is a misunderstanding. How can I misunderstand the situation? I could hear your voice from outside. Were you eavesdropping the whole time? Yes, I could hear you insulting us too. Why did you do all of this? This is far too creepy for you to be just collecting evidence. Well, we've got enough evidence because Sam hired a private investigator. Then why are you doing this to us? Because you guys are always telling us that we're boring. So, we were just trying to show you how spontaneous we can be. It's not funny at all. You're the only people who think it's not funny. Many people out there in the world would think this situation is hilarious. If I put it on YouTube, a lot of people would be interested, right? This is no joke. I told you that we're just joking around. We just want to show you our sense of humor. This is a violation of our privacy. You're talking about privacy even though you destroyed my private life? Do you understand what position you're in? You should be careful what you say to us. We have a good case to sue you for this. We could tell everyone at your work about your affair. Don't do that! Didn't I say you should be careful what you say? Is that an appropriate attitude to ask a favor of someone? Please don't do this. I'm begging you. We're both doing rather well at work. That's what I heard from Cheryl. You're well liked by your boss and subordinates at the office, right? You're especially popular among women for your kindness and honesty, huh? You're very cold to your wife at home, but you're pretending with everyone at work. It's for my promotion. You get it as a fellow corporate worker, right? I can get promotions by just being myself. I might be lacking in humor, but I earn more than you. Arrogant words for someone who gets cheated on by his wife. You should really watch what you're saying. Don't make me remind you you're on very thin ice. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Cheryl typed it, not me. That's an obvious lie. You need to learn basic common sense before even thinking about a sense of humor. And learn not to steal things from others and to listen to people. Even a child can understand better than you. That's why you haven't been promoted in years. That's not relevant. Sam is very patient and generous. Even after she knew about your affair, she tried to forgive you once. Is that true? Pass the phone to her. I want to talk to her. Oh, it's too late to beg for forgiveness. Your wife has completely abandoned you. You rejected her by saying it was creepy when she was trying to breathe new life into your relationship. So that's what she was trying to do. No, I didn't know those were her intentions. It's you who drove her into a corner so she would do such a thing. First of all, I don't think someone like you has a right to complain to her. You lack lots of things you need to be a human being. Do you really think you're in a position to complain to her about her lack of humor? 
Let me apologize to her. Please. Hey, it's me. Sam. I'm sorry for all the things I've done to you. So, can we just keep this to ourselves? Hey, can you pass the phone to Cheryl instead? Huh? Why? Do you want to talk to her? Because all women at your office are good talkers, right? I bet she is too. So she can give me some interesting excuses, right? I want to check how good of a talker she is, so pass it to her. Stop it. Please, just forgive me. You can't give the phone to her? Then open the door. Let's talk in person. You think she'll be more charming this way than over texts, right? Put on your clothes, of course. She's been crying on the floor this whole time. She's in no condition to talk. I see. That's a shame. You guys can't come up with anything good to say. You're both very boring. How are things afterwards, Kevin? I saw Cheryl crying buckets when she went home. Let her cry. This will be a good lesson for her. I packed my belongings and I'll be staying at a hotel for now. Later, I'll take the evidence you gave me to my lawyer and have her sort it out. What about you? Brad has been quiet, as expected. He's pale and shaking in the corner of the room. It's been peaceful since he won't tell me I'm boring. I'll leave here after I send my belongings to my parents' house. I don't want to stay in this house anymore. Understandable. My marriage had been tough, but now I can feel good about ending this relationship. I couldn't have done it without you, Kevin. Thank you for everything. Likewise, Sam. I felt better after seeing them both panicking. It's strange to say this, but it was a little bit fun. I think I knew deep down that I couldn't live with Cheryl anymore. If you didn't tell me, though, I think I would have lived my whole life just doing as she told me. I'm a little relieved after hearing that. I decided to do this, too. So don't worry about me. I suppose we both still have lots of things to do. We'd better start getting busy. Yeah, you're right. And it's going to be a better life for both of us than our awful married lives, won't it? We don't have to force ourselves to try to be funny anymore. I'm sure we can be happy without that. After that, Kevin and I were both able to divorce. Brett was lonely, so he was thinking of getting married to his affair partner. But I heard he was chewed out by his enraged parents and told not to embarrass them anymore, so he decided not to. Cheryl quit the company and disappeared quietly. Of course, we told everyone at their office about the affair, so she probably left because she couldn't handle the pressure. I hear that Brad is having a hard time at the office after everyone was gossiping about his affair. I moved into my parents' house and started working somewhere new to start life over. Brett called me boring, but I have family and friends who like who I am. I am grateful for the people I have, and I feel that true happiness is an ordinary, mundane life. I won't forget this realization. I'll continue to surround myself with people who like me. I hope I can regain my confidence and like myself a little more.